Let's add some huh, custom villagers to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom villagers to Minecraft. Now, this has actually changed from 118 to 119, but the change is, well, minimal, let's say. The most important thing is a tag that we're going to have to add, but let's just start at the very beginning. So in the tutorial mode package, we're going to right-click a new package called Villager. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new Java class called Mod Villagers. Now, for this class, we need a couple of things. First of all, two deferred registers. Yes, you heard me right, two. So we're going to make a public static final deferred register of type toy type. This one right here called poi underscore types. Now this is going to be equal to deferred register dot create forge registries dot poi types comma tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then we need a second one. And then also, oh, look at this. There you go. Right. Fix the typo there. And then we have public static final deferred register of type villager profession this time called villager underscore professions which is going to be equal to deferred register dot create or registries dot professions tutorial mod dot mod id. And as per usual, where there are deferred registers, there of course also is a method public static void register with an i event bus called event bus. And then we're calling poi types dot register passing in the event bus as well as doing villager professions dot register and passing in the event bus here as well. Now, as always, of course, all of the code will be available to you in the description below. Get a repository and individual gist as well. And what we need to do next when we have the register method, we're just going to call this right here. So we're going to say mod villagers.register, passing in the mod event bus variable right here, and that should be fine. Right, the next thing we want to do is we want to add another public static void method called register poise. And this is going to look very crazy. So this is going to be a try and a catch right here. Now, in the catch, we're going to catch an invocation target exception. And then this one line illegal access exception, we're just going to call this exception over here. And we're just going to basically print the stack trace if this were to happen. The error here is totally fine. What we want to do is we want to, in the try, we want to call the obfuscation reflection helper dot find method. We're going to put in point type dot class comma, then a string, which is going to be the register block states method basically that we're going to take a look at and then poi type dot class again after the closing parentheses we want to call invoke with a null as its first parameter and we're going to keep this empty for a moment so that we're going to keep this a deliberate error because here we actually want to put in the poi type in just a moment but i wanted to add this before because then this register poi method will then actually be added into the common setup now here we have another thing that we need to be wary of and that is going to be we need to call event.onqwork put in a runnable over here looking like this. So it's just like a it's similar to a supplier in that it starts with the lambda expression here right this but then actually doesn't return anything and here we're just going to say mod villagers dot register poise. I suggest not changing this because there might be some instance where we actually need to add multiple lines here. And if you were to, you know, replace it with a method reference like, like this, then it's harder to expand later. So I suggest keeping it like this, even though the IDE says that you can also make it otherwise. All right, so this should be fine. And now we can add the two registry objects. So once again, the first registry object here is going to be the poi type. So this is going to be the registry object of type poi type. And this is going to be the jumpy block poi equal to poi types dot register. The name is going to be the jumpy block poi. And now this is going to be crazy. This is going to be a supplier of a new poi type. This needs a immutable set dot copy of mod blocks dot jumpy block. We're going to take the jumpy block dot get dot get state definition dot get possible states. And then after the first Closing parentheses here, we're going to put in one and one. Closing it with a semicolon, and then we are fine. Uh, let's actually immediately do this one. So we're going to immediately say jumpy block dot get, jumpy block poi dot get, and then the register poi methods should have no more errors present and everything should be fine. So what is going on here? Well, we can see that we're passing in a immutable set of, you know, some sort of block, in this case, our jumpy block. Now our jumpy block will become the poi type, so the point of interest where the villager will go to to get a certain villager profession and for the villager profession we're going to add in just a moment but this is basically the idea of this poi type now why is all of this craziness needed well you can think of this like this we have seen the custom block states already for example with a lamp right you can either have lit true or lit false and basically what this craziness does with the state definition and gut possible states is basically make it so that a villager 
could use this block with any state that it has. So if we were to use the lamp, then what would happen is that it would work if the lamp is on or if it's off. That is the general idea in this case, and that is why we need to do it like this. Max tickets simply means that how many different villagers can actually take a job from this particular point of interest, and then the range should be fairly self-explanatory. It's just the range on where they can basically find it. Right, and then last but not least, we of course also have the public static final registry object of a type of villager profession. It's going to be the jump underscore master because that's the only name that came to mind. And that's going to be villager professions that register jump underscore master. And then the second parameter here, once again, is going to be a supplier. This time of a new villager profession. We're going to pass in the jump master name again. Then the second parameter is going to be a predicate. So that's going to be a x get equals jumpy block poi dot get. Third parameter is going to be exactly the same thing. It's going to be jumpy block dot get. And then we have two immutable sets. So there's going to be immutable set dot of this time, just an empty one. And then once again, immutable set dot of. And then the last parameter is going to be sound events dot villager underscore work armor. That's going to be fine. And then closing everything here. So what the frick is going on here? I'm not 100% sure, but what I, from what I understand here is that basically the predicates right here are used to determine the second, the primary and the secondary way types or the or the work sites basically for this particular villager. So we're just saying, hey, if the actual predicate, you know, if it's going to be a poi type of the poi type that we have that we've created here, then you can first of all get your job from there. And then you also have a secondary job at that particular position at that particular location. The sets here, we can actually go into this by middle mouse button clicking and you can see this is the held job site, as you can see the predicate, this is the cryable job site. And then here we have a requested items and a secondary poi. So that's actually how that works. So I highly suggest playing around with this or taking a look at what the normal villagers basically are doing. And that should probably also fill you in on some of the details there. But we are not done quite yet because we still need two more things actually. And that's first of all in the en underscore us json file. We want to add the entity dot minecraft dot villager dot jumpy underscore master and this should be the jumpy master there we go so now it also has a name when we open when we actually talk to the villager in this case and then under textures we need a texture for the profession and that is going to be the following so this is going to be under textures and then a new directory called entity inside of that directory a new directory called villager and then inside of there a new and last directory called profession we go and then i'm just going to copy over the png over here now this is just a slightly modified version of the armor i believe so nothing too crazy going on here it's just you know in my account in blue nothing insane there and then we also need because there's a as i've said quite a few things the actual tag inside of the data folder so this is going to be under minecraft tags and then inside of the tags folder we want a new folder called point underscore of underscore interest underscore types type very important point of point underscore of interest underscore type so make sure that this is written correctly and then we want a new json file in that and that is going to be called durable underscore job underscore site dot json once again make sure that everything here is written correctly and you can also take a look at the spelling in the github repository or in the gist as well and this is just a normal tag file in this case so you can see it just points to the jumpy block poi so it always points to the actual point of interest type in that case. And of course, we also want to add some custom traits to this. So for that, we're actually going to make a new package called event. We actually need to implement an event. We're going to talk about events in a future tutorial as well in a little bit more detail. But for the time being, we're just going to call this the mod events class in this case. And then what we're going to need is we're going to need above the class a add mod dot event bus subscriber. So what you can then do is you can then import the mod class and then you can see it should already work in this case. And then opening parentheses, mod ID equals tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then instead of the class, we want a public static void add custom trades method that has a villager trades event as its parameter. We're just going to call this event. Very important that we add the add subscribe event above the method. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I'm going to copy this over and explain line by line. So you can see here, we're basically adding to the toolsmith profession, right? This is just some boilerplate code. We're adding an eight ball on level one, and you're going to need to pay two emeralds. I highly suggest going through this on your own time again. It, it actually isn't as crazy as it looks at the first glance. Most of it is pretty much just 
boilerplate code, right? And then you just need to change things that you basically wanted to change. And you can also, of course, then the following, we can just duplicate this. And then instead of getting the villager profession from vanilla, we can then say mod villagers dot, and then we're going to say the jump, jump master dot get. And then we're just going to add to it where we have to do this. Actually, let's do one eight ball because I think that they can actually stack here. And then we're just going to say here, let's say, for example, we're just going to get, you know, maybe like 15 blueberries for five emeralds. And that is pretty much all that we need here. In this case, the integers right here, at least just going into the merchant offer and taking a look at this, you can see that it should be max uses, the XP and the price multiplier in that order. So this should be the max uses. So we have 10 max uses. This is the actual experience that the villager is going to get. And this is the multiplier for the price. And that is pretty much all that we need to add this properly. So as you could see, quite a few things. But once again, all of the code is available to you in the description below. Highly suggest checking this out, making sure that everything then works. And I mean, I guess let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, fans of back in Minecraft. So let's just see, set down a villager and let's see. Okay, he's going, oh, no, now he got it. And there we go. Okay, so the texture probably has something wrong with it, but we're going to figure that out in just a moment. Let's right click and there we go. We have our custom trade. So that's pretty much the most important thing. And then also there is a, a tutorial mod missing right here, but that should be totally fine. So let's fix those two things. And then we have a amazing custom villager. Of course, right here after the villager, we just need to add our tutorial mod mod ID, and that should be pretty much all that we need. And then I believe the texture, let's just see in the entity right here, it is the correct name. So that is very interesting indeed. So that definitely is the correct name. All right, so what you can do is you can then go into the run client and search for stuff. So jumping master can actually not be found. So maybe there is a typo in the villager over here. And we can see, indeed, it is actually called the Jump Master and not the Jumpy Master. So that would be the issue. So we're just going to rename it right here. So if we then were to search for a Jump Master in this case, you can see failed to load the texture because it's looking for the Jump Master PNG. And of course, that is not there. So in that case, what we're just going to do is we're just going to reload and see if it works now. But I'm pretty confident that it will. All right, we're back in Minecraft and let's just set down a new villager. Let's just get him. And there we go. Now the villager actually has the correct name and also has the correct well outfit on for its profession. So beautiful. And that is how easy it can be to add a custom villager to Minecraft. All right, and that concludes this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.